Plenty of development happens in Star Citizen every month, but it can be difficult to summarize it all into the best bits. So I took a shot at it myself. This is a big one, looking at dynamic AI updates, salvage gameplay development, and a lot of ship news. This is your summary of Star Citizen development in the month of February, the Thick Edition. Thanks for coming to my Tomato Talk. AI content finished a first pass on the coffee shop in February. This vendor is the second edition of the Bartender AI that originally brought interactive NPC experiences to the PU. It seems to be the next step in AI development for CIG, adding on to existing functionality and driving our vendors, shopkeepers, and other NPCs towards a fully reactive and responsive model. The AI tech team progressed with the Planetary Navigation Mesh, the system that will allow all NPCs, both human and alien, to move around and complete tasks on planet surfaces. On the subsumption side, the team added mission logic branches so that they allow missions to flow differently based on what's happening elsewhere in the game. While no specific examples were given, I imagine this would allow for many more counter missions that players can take to disrupt other missions that players are running. This actually already exists in game with Tisha Pacheco's mission line on Arcorp, but it was added mainly as an alpha functionality as a proof of concept and now seems to be being expanded to the full AI system. Dynamic Conversations also progressed last month, developing a method in which multiple NPCs, when in the right location, can stop and begin exchanging relevant conversational lines which are dynamically spawned for NPCs based on their character. NPC Push and Pull was also updated, which will likely come in handy in the future when we need NPCs to load our ships with cargo. That will work in line with the navigation mesh that I mentioned earlier. On the ship side, further development went into allowing NPCs to land their ships anywhere. These landings will dynamically spawn based on the surrounding geography and will differ based on ships to differentiate landing styles. Because we all know how it would end up if a javelin landed like it was a gladius. The character art team worked on frontier outfits for Pyro, as well as some Ninetales themed materials for later this year. While Ninetales has primarily been themed in-game as being a blue, it'll be interesting to see if CIG ever moves more towards the neon purple vibe that we've seen in concept art. The concept art team also finished the Salvage Specialist backpack and additional Pyro Gang outfits. In ships, the Hull A finalized interior lighting, completed LODs, and worked on the damage pass to allow the ship to receive wear and tear. The Scorpius is close to final art complete with the wings completed and animating. The LOD and damage passes are also underway on this ship. Both of these ships are one month from scheduled release as of the time of this video's release. The Banu Merchantman is finishing its white box phase and is seeing materials develop to find the final look of the ship. This ship is going to be absolutely incredible as an art piece. The gameplay is yet to be proven, but I feel like this ship's release is going to be a landmark in video game ship design. Finally, two more ships that haven't been announced are approaching Greybox and Final Art Complete. The latter received Final Art, LODs, and is receiving damage passes shortly. So it's at about the same stage as the Hull A and the Scorpius, though it may need additional tech work done before release, so don't get too excited for a 317 reveal. The Drake Corsair also received a quality bar. This led to the layout of some areas being changed to avoid players getting tracked by geometry, and a final art pass on the cockpit and mess hall. Another beloved ship in this collection, making great progress for release this year. The weapon team which also works on tools built the fire extinguisher for fire hazard gameplay. In addition, they are wrapping up final art on the dedicated salvage tool, which we've heard plenty about but actually haven't seen despite last year's tools preview. Finally, a pass was completed on all iron sights in the game to improve the quality of the design and gameplay of FPS weapons. In February, the physics team continued work on soft bodies. Ooh. Work also continued on the general physics optimizations and improvements to wheeled vehicles. Ranger win. On the rendering side of things, the transition to Gen 12 continued. This system is meant to relieve the stress on your CPUs while running the game, in addition to other benefits. 
While not an immediate fix, it will improve game performance over time. You can find a video explaining this process linked down below. In this report, we learned that planet terrain height maps are now running on Gen 12, and atmosphere and clouds are currently being ported over. After this is complete, clouds, ground fog, and terrain shadows will be converted. Keep an eye on these sections for when that happens. Throughout February, the features team developed salvage gameplay. This mainly consisted of improving the use of damage mapping to represent ship holes being stripped off as described last month. While we've seen some representations of this, it has taken a long time to reach player hands. I dive into detail and a half in one of my recent exclusive videos. All supporters on any platform get access to these videos if you want a bit more quality detailed videos about the development of Star Citizen. On the technical side of features, the team has begun seriously looking into improving movement synchronization between player clients to avoid desync. The EUPU team continued polishing refueling gameplay for its release next month, and work continued on life support and engineering gameplay as well. Clearly there are a lot of game loops in production right now. We'll keep an eye on how they progress throughout the year. The graphics team made a big first step in significantly improving performance in the game with the enabling of the scene renderer on the main branch. You can reference the same video I mentioned earlier down in the video description for more on what this may mean for the game. Both the graphics and VFX teams also focused on the damage map used in salvage and repair, which we're seeing in other sections of this monthly report as well. The locations team worked on derelict settlements, a long sought after addition to the game that has been seen in videos but was only barely introduced to the game years ago. The white box proof of concept is currently being made for later in the year as a target for each settlement going forward. This includes the art team's visual target, the design team's mission and AI subsumption requirements, and the tools team procedural programs that can speed up the process of making these. We've seen this done with planets and outposts already, and are currently watching it happen with rivers as well. This points to those derelict settlements actually being a thing in the game this time, rather than before when it was mostly just talk. Something I talk about in one of my most recent exclusive videos that goes over the details of the development cycle of these derelicts, and looks at how they've changed and grown in importance. While the current derelict settlement in question is a reclaimer, the team is also looking at the Mercury Star Runner and the 600i. A rework of Lorville also began, with the city being scaled up to allow bigger buildings, which will be used for the interior building gameplay that players will be able to take part in in different cities and areas. The Sandbox team had a fun month, building and testing out their new outposts for potential release later this year. Art began on the white box phase of derelict outposts as well, which will include a variety of exploration-driven spaces surrounding larger abandoned buildings hopefully filled with actually interesting loot. The team also worked on new varieties of space debris and space structures that will allow for new exploration opportunities in space. Narrative continued working towards an upcoming dynamic event with multiple characters and several non-linear objectives. It's set to be a complex event with more coordination than others in the past. The team also proposed some new mission character archetypes, NPCs that can act as more casual mission givers, it seems. Last month, the UI team progressed with the visuals and underlying features of the new star map, as it slowly drags its way to the persistent universe where we can be delivered from the evils of the current horrid implementation. I can't wait, I'm, I'm shaking. The team also continued refactoring the AR marker system, which could be the first signs of our ability to save and share points of interest with other players. The VFX team continued working on the salvage effects, including a particle emitter that will cease to exist once all salvage material is gone in order to help communicate to players that their job is done without flashing the words on a screen. While the feature team is building these game loops out, many teams like VFX, audio, and graphics as we've seen have to be involved in the process. 
A delay on any of these teams, whether due to sickness, world events, or a vacation, can easily ripple into the others. We'll keep a close eye on Salvage and the other game loops to see if this does happen this year. And there you have it, a Thick Boy February development update. Heavy on feature news, AI updates, and ship development. If you're interested in Star Citizen and want to learn more about what's going on, you can subscribe here. But if you want a deeper understanding of the game and the development cycle of the features included, you can support me here on YouTube, Patreon, or Ko-fi, and receive exclusive videos every month as I mentioned during this video, as well as other benefits like behind the scenes videos, live podcast viewings, and more. Either way, I'm happy to bring you the quality Star Citizen content you're looking for. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.